The Oscars and Emmys are the two oldest entertainment award ceremonies that made their broadcasting debut to millions of TVs in the 1950s. From the glamour of celebrities rolling down the red carpet, to the speeches, to the surprising winners, award shows attracted massive attention throughout the decades. The Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences presents its annual awards for film merit. It's a yearly celebration for Hollywood. Both the Oscars and Emmys have had a strong hold on the entertainment award show zeitgeist through much of the late 80s and 90s. But as of late, viewership for award shows have been on a steady decline. The Oscars saw an 81.2% drop from its peak viewership from 1998 to 2021. As for the Emmys, they saw an 80.6% drop from its peak viewership in 1986 to 2021. But it's not just the number of people who are not tuning into these shows, it's also who's actually turning up to watch. Viewership for both the Oscars and Emmys have become much older, as the last year's Oscars pointed out that advertisers' target age demographic of 18 and 49 year olds are fading away drastically each year. I think they have to address multiple problems on multiple fronts. You know what I mean? Again, this is this is a this is a brand new world in terms of how we receive all of our content, and yet the award show format has not changed in over 50 years. On top of the steady decline in ratings, the prestigious Hollywood events have also been hit with controversies and protests that jeopardizes award shows as we've come to know them. However, the Oscars and Emmys play a vital part for the film and television industry. Collectively, studios have spent an estimated $100 million each year for four-year consideration campaigns to land nominations for their movies or shows. You gotta make money. So at the end of the day, you're in the entertainment business and you're gonna mostly program things that are gonna get eyeballs, sell tickets, sell subscriptions, and so on and so forth. That does not mean that every studio and every streamer doesn't wanna win awards. So what happened to award shows that turned them into must-watch nights to missable TV for audiences? How will the drop in viewership and bad press affect ad spending or the industry's multi-million dollar four-year consideration campaigns? Nearly a century ago, the Academy of Motion Pictures and Sciences presented the first ever Academy Awards in 1929, most commonly known as the Oscars. Back then, the Oscars looked a bit different. It was a private event at the Roosevelt Hotel in Los Angeles with 270 of Hollywood's who's who in attendance, with the winners being announced via newspaper the next day. The Oscars would not be televised for almost 25 years, but as films were the most common form of entertainment during the 20s through 40s, television was on the rise. In 1949, the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences created the Emmy Awards. From 1953 to the early 2000s, both the Oscars and Emmys were viewed as must-watch television as both took over tens of millions of household televisions. Memorable, can't-miss moments happened every year, from famous headliners hosting to controversial moments and unexpected films and TV shows taking home the night's biggest prizes. Through the mid-80s to early 2000s, the Oscars and Emmys had both healthy growth and stable viewership almost annually. In 1986, the Emmys had its best year ever, with 35.8 million viewers tuning in, while the Oscars' best year was in 1998 with 55.2 million viewers. Ad spending for both award shows became just as significant as events like the Super Bowl, and for good reason, as they were the two biggest nights in entertainment that weren't sports related. From 2001 to 2010, the average cost of a 30 second spot was an estimated $1.48 million for the Oscars, with an average annual viewership of 39.3 million viewers. And during that span, the Oscars generated $720 million from 30 second ad spots alone. Over the years, award shows have been a valuable metric to tip the scales for potential audiences to see a film in theaters or tune into a TV show. Landing a nomination is advantageous for studios and the talent around Hollywood, as it can mean significant returns for their bottom lines. Even if you look now in, in any kind of movie that they advertise on television, if that, ta if that actor has been nominated for an Academy Award, they're going to let you know <laughs> in any trailer, um, you know, in any kind of advertisement. You know, getting nominated, I think, you know, it ma certainly matters to the actors and the actresses and, and to the talent, the directors, even the cinematographers. Their rates go up. The amount of quality material that comes on that played, you know, goes way higher. The amount of options they have go, you know, goes much higher as well. For the studio or the production company, certainly you get a bump. Of course, again, that paradigm has changed, you know, for Hulu or, you know, even for Amazon with like Manchester by the Sea or, you know, some of these other films that they kind of went in on. It's, it's subs, right? They want to make sure that they can get subs out of it. In 2019, the last time films were released theatrically before the pandemic, movies saw an increase in ticket sales after their Best Picture nomination announcement. 
1917 saw a 63% increase, Little Women saw 21%, Parasite 18%, Jojo Rabbit 15 Ford vs. Ferrari at 3%, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood with 0.5%, and Joker with 0.2%. For your consideration campaigns are run almost like yearly political campaigns. Many marketing narratives surrounding a show, movie, or actor are created to drum up hype and recognition. So for your consideration campaigns are basically, you know, coordinated airstrikes to get <laughs> to get your movie in front of voting bodies for awards. Um, they're quite expensive. They take a long time, um, but they have proven to be incredibly successful um, in increasing visibility uh, and getting traction for smaller films. Maybe let's say let's 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 commercial films. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's sort of its own micro economy here in Hollywood. The price of trying to land a nomination varies from studio to studio. Smaller, more independent studios that greenlight a film or TV series may only have a certain amount of cash flow willing to spend on a campaign. Strategists or consultants would then establish a narrative or archetype, such as the underdog, to help push these smaller projects to the top of nomination contention. It's a more grassroots style of campaigning with a limited budget, but sometimes it does in fact work. Then there are studios with giant deep pockets. Enough to afford running campaigns ranging from $300,000 to $10 million to run effective, creative marketing campaigns to generate a nomination. You know, it costs a lot of money <laughs> from billboards to bus side print ads to printing DVDs and paying for digital streaming access, uh, you know, all the way down to paying for stylists and wardrobe and hair people for your movie stars uh, to do photo calls, you know, endless amounts of Q&As. Streaming giant Netflix spent an estimated $60 million on a single four-year consideration campaign for the film Roma back in 2018. But it's unclear whether these nominations will still have a big effect on box office sales, TV ratings, or subscribers if viewers aren't paying attention to award shows anymore. Both the Oscars and Emmys are the two oldest award shows in entertainment and had a stronghold on American television since their inception. From 2000 to 2010, the Oscars viewership did not see much growth as its best year was in 2000, with 46.3 million viewers tuning in. Yet viewership did flutter from its 10-year low of 32 million viewers back to 41.7 million viewers from 2008 to 2010. During the same 10-year period, the Emmy saw declining viewership starting with 21.8 million viewers to 13.5 million viewers. Yet both award shows saw their numbers drastically take a turn for the worse. The Oscars saw its viewership from 2011 go from 37.9 million viewers tuning in to just 10.4 million viewers in 2021. As for the Emmys, they went from 12.4 million viewers in 2011 to just 7.8 million viewers in 2021, both historic lows for the storied award shows. So what exactly started this decline? For one, award shows have been hit with a barrage of bad press from aging industry standards and practices that have not progressed over the years from a lack of diverse voices at the helm of studios and the award members. Movements such as Oscars So White launched in 2015 sparked a much needed conversation about the lack of diversity for film's highest honor where diverse voices and faces are underrepresented both in front and behind the camera. And while initially beginning in 2006 by founder Tarana Burke, the Me Too movement was on the world stage 11 years later as sexual assault allegations from influential players in Hollywood sparked a push for justice and gender equity. But it's not just the Academy Awards nor Emmys marred by controversy. In 2021, the Golden Globes came under intense scrutiny for both lack of diverse voices in its 87-member Hollywood Foreign Press Association and allegations of lapses in journalistic ethics in its nomination process. They've run into trouble with the amount of money that campaigners spend in wooing them, flying around the world for set visits, uh, you know, whining and dining them as uh, Hollywood Notorious it does during award season. Um, but more than that, I think very recently we learned um, that, you know, they had not one black member in their body, which was, you know, kind of just unthinkable um, in, in, uh, in today's Hollywood. And, and also had just sort of been facing this legacy erosion uh, with their business practices. NBC Universal, the parent company of CNBC, signed a six-year, nearly $60 million per year deal with the Golden Globes in 2018, but terminated that contract in 2021. In 2022, the Golden Globes went untelevised, with past winners returning their awards. I think any award show lives and dies by the talent that support it. And to have a truly global star like Tom Cruise, and don't forget that this is the Hollywood Foreign Press we're talking about, you know, sort of outwardly reject 
um, you know, his previous trophies uh, in, in the face of all their controversy is a massive wake up call because if they don't have the support of the artists, I don't know what that organization or that show looks like moving forward. Another area where award shows are taking a hit is actually who's tuning into these shows. Cord cutting has seen demographics from 18 to 29 and 30 to 49 forego traditional methods of getting live television. And 61% of 18 to 29 year olds don't use cable or satellite TV at all. Instead, they turn to streaming services. Because of this, TV viewership these days are skewing much older. Just take the Oscars. Still the biggest award show in terms of viewership, it saw the key target demographic for advertisers in the age range of 18 to 35 and 36 to 49 drop significantly, with 60% fewer people tuning in. And more and more viewers are streaming their content rather than tuning into live events. According to Pew Research, 91% of people who do not have traditional cable or satellite subscriptions say they do not use cable or satellite because they know that they can access the content they want online instead. However, the question remains, is the way that Nielsen measures its ratings a bit outdated? These award shows have seen growth in the digital space, with social media audiences. Sites like YouTube and Twitter have seen millions of impressions and interactions as these award shows are happening live, as many younger viewers may be in fact watching outside the traditional live broadcast that Nielsen measures for. Especially with Twitter, where a lot of times moments from these shows will trend individually, um, they are completely edited down, chopped and served up to you. You can probably watch the entire Academy Awards over the series of four or five tweets, really to get what highlights are, and then read an article about the you know list of big winners. The bottom line is there are certain things that are out of your control. The, you know the proliferation of of how we get our entertainment and where we can get our entertainment, of course, continues to grow seemingly by the hour. So, you know, to be able to be on your phone and a couple of clicks, a couple of swipes to get to what you want and the type of entertainment you want, that's, that's certainly one issue. In order to combat the loss in viewership with younger audiences, the Oscars in 2009 expanded their Best Picture category from 5 to 10 to garner more viewership as blockbuster films such as Avatar were nominated. Historically, most movies nominated for Best Picture do not have much of a broad audience base and an overwhelmingly number of these films do not make their budgets back. You look at a film like Nomadland, this is a film that was made on a very low budget, gross two and a half to three million. They probably put, you know, a good million, million and a half, if not more than, you know, what the film grossed into the For Your Consideration campaign. In 2019, the Academy Awards was reported to create a new category specifically for blockbuster films and would see films like Black Panther move from Best Picture to a new most popular film category for that year. The Academy introducing a popular, most popular film, clearly that backfired on, on them and, and thankfully they abandoned it as quickly as they introduced it. But, you know, I think, I, I understand why they did it. You know, they're trying to get that younger audience in. And the idea of just making it a popular vote, really, you know, it's almost condescending. And it's condescending to the filmmakers, quite frankly. It's condescending to the producers, the actors, and everybody that worked on the film. You know, you want to be, you want to have the film to have merit, and that doesn't mean that a popcorn film can't have merit, but if you're going to put it within the parameters of best picture as it's been sort of defined for the last, you know, nearly 100 years, then we have to look at it through that lens. The other issue with the Oscars and Emmys may be fatigued from so many other award shows. From the Grammys to VMAs to the People's Choice Awards, the Game Awards, and much, much more. Since 2011, the Grammys have seen the same decline in interest as both the Oscars and Emmys, hitting all-time lows in 2021. But for now, award shows continue to reshape and retool their now antiquated formatting for more inclusive and diverse systems. In 2020, both the Emmys and Oscars announced new criteria for films and television shows that must be met to be nominated. In February of 2022, the Oscars announced the show would not go hostless for the first time since 2018 and it would be the first Oscars in history to have all three hosts be women. And to help drum up younger audiences, the Academy also announced a Twitter fan vote for filmgoers' favorite film of 2021 to be recognized during the show. However, in its attempt to streamline its broadcast, the Oscars announced that it would cut eight awards from its live show, an announcement met with intense backlash from fans and top industry talent. Both organizations behind the award shows have mentioned equitable hiring practices and representation on and off screen to reflect the diverse film community. But is any incremental change that award shows make enough for them to have a real shot at having a future?
Certainly they could bring a younger contingent to the people that are presenting awards, you know, potentially the hosts and, and how they how the show is uh, put together for sure. There has long been a future that has been feared in Hollywood, I would say at least over the past five years, that we're approaching this complete dissolution of verticals between film, television, gaming, advertorial, fat, you know, all, all, all these things are sort of converging at the same time. And when you have an award show like the, like the Oscars, that's exclusive to film, right? And we talked earlier about how the changing definition of that can alienate some people. Uh, oddly enough, I think the best positioned award show at the moment is the Golden Globes, despite their horrendous internal problems. Um, celebrating film and TV at the same time, I think is a really wide net to cast. It gets a lot of people excited, but it's about having those maybe sort of old world thoughts about what constitutes a movie. It really does sort of turn off a massive potential audience.